Hey guys, we're going to be talking about climate change and its effect on the biosphere. So what is a biosphere? A biosphere includes all living organisms, including protozoa, bacteria, plants, fungi, animals, and even, yes, you guessed it, even us. The sphere is a carbon sink, and a carbon sink is something that stores more carbon than it puts out. So as climate change affects the climate, the stores are changing in response. This is going to affect all living organisms. For example, rising temperatures. Higher temperatures are forcing some species into higher latitudes or higher altitudes to find temperatures more conducive to their survival. Animals are mobile and thus able to shift their range relatively quickly. But if they're already living in the coldest places on the planet, they have nowhere to go. This is the case at high latitudes and high altitudes, for example, the polar bear. Contrastingly, long warm summers and short cool winters are resulting in the spread of insect pests. The longer summers increase the breeding season and the short cool winters fail to kill eggs and larval stages. The shift of species into higher altitudes or higher latitudes means that the ge geographical range for some species will expand, which may threaten other species. It may throw off the balance. So most species are pretty strong. Through evolution, Darwin's theory, they're able to adapt and acclimate to different temperatures, climates, and ecosystems. But if the change is rapid, as it is now, the species may not be able to adapt or move quickly enough, and therefore it will die out. So studies by the scientists at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and the California Institute of Technology have identified the ecological hotspots where species turnover is likely to be highest. That means the most species are going to be leaving the area and coming back in the area. Some of these include the Himalayas and the Tibetan Plateau, because it's a climactic island, equatorial East Africa due to drought sensitive climates, and a number of smaller areas including Madagascar, Mediterranean regions, parts of South America, and the Great Plains and Great Lakes in North America. They've also managed to identify what parts of the world are most sensitive to such change and ecologically sensitive. This map demonstrates it. The red parts or orange parts are indicative of the most sensitive regions. The green is indicative, or the light blue, depending on your opinion, is indicative of medium sensitivity. And the dark blue is indicative of low sensitivity regions. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the aquatic biosphere, which is a reference to the biosphere concerning anything aquatic, naturally. So as climate change increases and temperatures increase, the sea level is rising because of ice melt. It's estimated that between 1900 and 2016, the sea level has risen almost eight whole inches. This is serious consequences. First of all, it's destroying habitats, such as our good friend, the polar bear. Animals simply don't have the same ecosystems that they used to have to live in. The ecosystems are threatened by the higher temperatures because they're duration and their extent is reduced. Moreover, rising sea levels mean that salt water intrudes into freshwater ecosystems. This may force some species to relocate or even die. Species are going to be lost from food chains and food webs, thus disrupting the entire ecosystem. Again, species just can't adapt. Another problem we're facing with climate change and the increased deposits of CO2 in the atmosphere is ocean acidification. So ocean acidification results from increased levels of carbon in the ocean, obviously. Now this carbon can come from several sources as we've already learned. Cars, breath, for example, exhalations, the fossil fuels industry, the animal industry, natural sources, but the scale has been tipped out of balance and therefore there's more carbon being deposited in the ocean, which again is a carbon sink than ever before. 
Now this causes a chemical reaction. The carbon dioxide creates an uptick in the levels of hydrogen concentrate ions, which slightly lowers the pH of the ocean, making it acidic, as the ocean is currently fairly basic. Now this has widespread consequences for coral life in particular, and coral life, as we know, is a massive, massive habitat and ecosystem in and of itself. Scientists estimate that the coral cover in the Great Barrier Reef in Australia could drop to less than 10% from its current state due to the rise in carbon deposits. Moreover, ocean acidification causes a reduction in reproduction, growth, and development of many marine organisms. This is going to make it more difficult for organisms to survive. And last but not least, acidification reduces the ability of marine organisms like crabs to form calcium carbonate shells or skeletal features as they rely on the basic nature of the ocean to do so. So back to a topic that we touched on briefly before, animal migration. So migratory species usually move in response to seasonal changes. Climate change could alter the timing of migration and mating. For example, warmer temperatures could result in some birds nesting and having offspring even earlier than before. To quote a statistic by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, 28 species of migratory birds that winter in the south are returning north 13 days earlier in spring than a century ago. Moreover, the arrival of 16 out of 23 butterfly species in California has been recorded as early. So these changes in migratory patterns aren't inherently bad, but they might not be matched by the availability of food sources and or pest avoidance. So there could be higher mortality rates in the migrating species as a result. So carbon and the biosphere. So carbon enters the biosphere when plants extract carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and use it for photosynthesis. We all know this. The carbon is then combined with other compounds and elements such as hydrogen, oxygen, or nitrogen to form organic carbon in plant material that is then passed along food chains. Hence, the carbon-based life forms on Earth, both dead and alive, are one of, carbon's, one of the carbon cycle's biggest sinks. As the organic carbon is passed along the food chain, organisms respire and release carbon back into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. It's the carbon cycle. And some of that carbon is, as already mentioned, stored in inorganic calcium carbonate. Now, forests are the largest of the biosphere's carbon sinks, with up to 80% of the above ground carbon and around 30% of the below ground carbon held in forests. And believe it or not, some 45% of this carbon is stored in just two forest areas the Russian taiga and Amazonia in South America. That's why the election of the recent conservative president in Brazil has freaked out environmentalists so much. It could be a big dent to the fight against climate change. So there's also a risk of forest fire and the destruction of ecosystems as temperatures are increasing. And another effect of temperatures increasing is that the rate at which the carbon cycle occurs is speeding up. Moreover, in the Arctic, permafrost is being melted and gases such as methane are being released into the atmosphere. It's a positive feedback loop. 